Finally, I'm doing a video on historical knitting, which makes me very happy because learning to knit was when I fell in love with yarn and the whole idea of creating entire garments from tiny little stitches in the first place. Today I will be trying this waffle stitch pattern on an 8 inch by 8 inch or 20 cm by 20 cm swatch from Lucretia Peabody Hayes book The Art of Knitting from 1881. I put the link for it down below, it's free. I'm actually planning on doing these stitch pattern squares fairly regularly because I have a somewhat big project in mind for them, which I will tell you about in a minute. I started by doing a 4 inch by 4 inch or 10 cm by 10 cm swatch to work out how many stitches I would need for my 20 cm by 20 cm square. I washed my swatch in cold water and let it dry overnight just to be sure there wouldn't be any surprises later. So this is the engraving of the waffle stitch pattern in the book, which after having had my first go at knitting it, I found to be upside down most unfortunately. This pattern being only the third one in the book, this mistake must have made poor Victorian beginner knitter lady's life pretty hard indeed, I think. The first reason I'm suspecting the engraving is upside down is because if we have 6 stitches here, as the pattern states, then the little V's of the knit stitches are going the wrong way. The other reason that finally convinced me is these big V's, which are essentially two very big knit stitches, stretched over several rows, and they are also wide on the bottom and narrow on the top, instead of being wide on the top and narrow on the bottom, as these and knit stitches usually are. So flipping our illustration the right way up, we begin by casting on a multiple of 8 stitches, plus 6. Miss Hayes stresses that we must do this row very loosely, so as not to accidentally gather the knit piece by making it tighter than the rest. The first four rows are very simple, viewed from the right side, they're just all purl stitches. Because I'm knitting back and forth, this means I purl the first row. This is the right side. I knitted the next, this is the wrong side, then purl the next and knitted the next. I almost always slip the first stitch of every row, so that the edge will look nice, the book advises this too. The next right side row begins the pattern with the edge stitches. So you begin the row with slipping one stitch, then purling two. Unlike the example in the book, which had two, I had three edge stitches at the beginning and at the end of each row. These are always purl stitches on the right side and knit stitches on the wrong side. The next two stitches will create the waffle pattern. The pattern either has a mistake here too, or is just very vague, because all it says is you should slip two stitches as if to purl and bring the yarn back to the right side. I assume that slipping two stitches as if to purl means that you need to bring your yarn to the front. This, however, is not the case, because to achieve those two big V shapes, you need to keep the yarn at the back of the work when you're working on the right side, behind the slip stitches. Then you need 6 stitches, then repeat the pattern from the slip stitches however many times you need. I just had to make sure that those edge stitches were always purled on the right side and knit on the wrong side. On the next row, which will be the wrong side of the work, after knitting the 3 edge stitches, the pattern is done like this. I slip 2 stitches the yarn in front this time so that those horizontal bars will always be at the back of the work which is facing you right now. The book does not make any reference to this but I can't think of any other way to do this and have it look like the engraving. Then I purred 6. And repeated the pattern from the slip stitches until I reached the edge stitches at the end of the row. The description says you should repeat the last two rows two more times, so that you need six rows of the pattern, but the illustration shows only four, I'm pretty sure, and it also makes more sense because that way you have four plain rows and four waffle rows, which is much more symmetrical. So I repeated the last two rows once. Then it's just a matter of repeating 4 purl rows and 4 waffle rows until you reach the desired length.
And this is what the finished square looks like. Miss Hale, of course, cautions not to knit your bind of row too tightly, so keep that in mind. I soak my swatch in cold water for a few minutes, because blocking pieces like this is a very important, although not very fun step. Then I press out the water by rolling up my square in a tea towel, then squishing it with my hands. You absolutely must never wring it if you want to remain on good terms with the knitting guides. This step is even more effective and definitely much more childish fun if you roll your piece in a towel, then step and walk on it for a few minutes. Then I laid my square on a dry tea towel and adjusted it to assume the shape of an 8 inch by 8 inch square or a 20 cm by 20 cm square and let it dry all by itself on a flat surface. This step will be much harder to execute when I need enough pieces to make a bedspread or knitted quilt in more old-fashioned terms, which is my eventual plan for these Victorian pattern square experiments. If I don't change my mind in the process somewhere, I will need 40 squares in all. I will make 4 squares of each pattern, which means I will try 10 different Victorian stitch patterns. You've just seen the first and now I'm off to need three more. 